as well. So we record all of these, we share out with the rest of our community. Um, <clears throat> the format is pretty simple. I can keep an eye on the chat down below and also on people raising their hands and then just allow people to speak. Usually we'll allow for questions at the end, but if people want to like throughout the call, if anyone on the call wants to raise their hand, feel free to do so. Um, I already went ahead in the chat and threw in the website for Voxy and then also for um, Menguin. Am I saying that right? Yep. Okay. Um, which I will tell you all about in Bogdan's intro. So Bogdan here is the founder and CEO of Voxy, which is a conversational text platform that helps brands build two-way relationships with their customers at scale. Voxy is proud to help clients from LG to Buff City Soap talk with their customers in an authentic and meaningful way across the entire life cycle. He previously founded Mingwen, which is in the chat box. Um, it's the, it was the world's first direct consumer suit and tuxedo rental company. Um, he scaled the business by over 10,000%, which is super awesome. And he did this by texting with his customers. Um, I guess it was like two and a half years from launch until you were able to sell it. Is that correct? That's exactly nice. it. Yeah. So um, ended up selling it to the founder of Men's Warehouse. Bogdan lives here in Atlanta. Um, so that's super cool. We maybe can have you out to Saltbox at some point. Um, uh, we're super excited to have you today. I think, you know, you could be a, you'll be a really great resource for our members um, and provide some great insights, you know, because you've kind of seen a lot of the same issues that our members have, you know, just by running your own e-commerce business. So we'll leave time for questions at the end. Um, without further ado, take it away. I'm going to mute myself for now, um, but I will be on standby. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Great to be here with you. Um, you know, fellow entrepreneur, really have a soft spot in my heart for folks that are trying to scale consumer businesses. I've been in the trenches. I know how hard it is. Um, and, and, and like we mentioned, uh, I'm here in Atlanta, uh, so local, but also want to be accessible. I know you guys have a Dallas location. Before COVID, we spent a lot of time in Dallas. We have a number of clients there. And once we fully come out of COVID, I expect to be on the road a good bit. So anybody in Dallas would love to meet next time I'm there, probably there at least once a month. Um, but yeah, just full disclosure, I think it's important. And again, we're here talking about text marketing and that's a hot thing. You guys are probably all getting served ads by a bajillion companies doing it. I want to talk about one, what it means, two, why it's important for your business, and three, even more so the right way to do it. There's a lot of folks that are doing what I call one-way spam and you get a, a nice impression and click bump, but in about six months, you've burned your audience, which I think is the wrong way to do about it, uh, to go about it. But you know, we live in a world where it's all instant, 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 right? That's what we're trained to do with Facebook and everything else, right? And I think we need to take a longer term view of the relationship we build with our client. But um, I've got a deck, I'll share it. I'm awful with decks, full disclosure. I wanna have a conversation. So please uh, stop me at any point, ask questions. Uh, I think one would be a, a more fun experience. But um, just to just to reiterate why we're here and what Boxy is, is we call ourselves a conversational commerce platform. It's super buzzwordy, I know. Uh, the thesis is that you have to talk with your customer, not at them, but with them. And very few mediums outside of on the phone or live chat let you do that today. And very few let you do that scalably, right? And I, the thesis is once you build a relationship with your customer and you converse with them, you're going to sell them in that medium. So the vision of the world that we're building and the one that I personally believe in is one where I learn everything about it. I know we've got Michael on here and, and John and Ricky and, and Varda and Michelle, but it's a world where we build that relationship. And then I start asking you questions. What did you like about this product? What do you want to buy next? And that informs what I build. And as soon as it's ready, I sell it to you and you buy it right there in message. You say, I love this. And I build your card and I create the order in Shopify or whatever e-commerce platform you're using and the customer never leaves a text conversation. By the way, that, that exists with us today. It's in beta, we call it reply to buy. Um, and that's kind of the world where you remove friction from the buyer's journey, you build a relationship, you learn what they wanna buy next, and then you sell them that with, with no friction. And we started with SMS. So to, to that, that first point, conversational text marketing platform, but we're, we're, at it, we're gonna add other modalities. Wherever your customer talks to their friends and family, the thesis that Voxy has is you have to be there as well. Today, that's text United States. But once you guys start expanding to Latin America, Asia, APAP, Europe, wherever, right? It's going to be different modalities. WhatsApp, WeChat, wherever it may be, you have to be there. Instagram DM and TikTok DM, which are two that we're pretty bullish on and that are on our roadmap to build later on uh, uh, this year and early next. But 
going back to you know why Voxy exists, I think that's a really important part of the story. Like I like I mentioned, I used to be just like you guys, had a direct to consumer business in the online tuxedo rental space, a massive two point two billion dollar industry. We were the first we were the first to market, became one of the fastest growing, raised money from the Walton family of Walmart. Mark Cuban, a variety of other well-known uh, uh, investors and entrepreneurs, and ultimately ended up scaling that business to an exit about two and a half years later to the Men's Warehouse Holding Company, sold it technically to the founder himself. Uh, uh, and then I spent about a year and a half as the CMO of the holding company, trying to help them scale and grow by adopting more direct-to-consumer practices. And the biggest one was Bogdan's texting thing. So um, I want to talk specifically about that here today. So why SMS? So you guys are all likely using Klaviyo or some other variant. Maybe some of you are using Mailchimp because it's a little, you know, less expensive, or some other variant of email marketing. Um, what you, what I what I was doing was exactly what you were doing, right? I launched my own e-commerce business. Uh, it was so early that Shopify couldn't even be customized. Shopify Plus didn't exist, so everything was custom in house. But obviously, I was buying ESPs and things like that off the shelf. Um, and very early on, about a year into the business, I started seeing something strange happen, right? I was looking at my cohorts of users that I had acquired from Facebook, from Google. Remember, I would acquire them and I would drip nurture them through email to conversion and my open rates were declining. And I was like, huh, that's weird. Um, you know, I wonder why. Uh, and then the more and more I dove in, showing up in places like spam promotions, it just was not uh, uh, improving. And over time, I was watching my oldest cohorts. I had a longer sales cycle than most traditionally calm sales cycles inside of 45 days. My sales cycle was three to nine months, right? Because it was for wedding and it was a larger AOV. So the challenge I was running into was how do I now build a relationship with this customer when after two months, I can't even get my emails across to them. I'm showing up in Gmail spam and promotions. So that was the rabbit hole I went down. So I started asking for phone number. And first we spun up a call center and I started calling people. That was a colossal failure. Nobody answers the phone, as you guys know. We would get the best we ever got was a 1.2% answer rate. And then even then, the reps and myself, I was on the phones too, would get screamed at, cussed at, all those bad things, right? My big inflection point came as I was going on this rabbit hole of where does the customer live and how do I get in front of them? How do I simulate an in-store experience? I was competing with men's warehouse. And in, my, in the back of my head, I was like, what, what experience do they get there? It's crappy, but there's trust. I drive to a store, I've invested. And the salesperson says, hi, Mr. Bogdan, how are you? What can I help you with? Oh, I'm, I'm getting married. I'm looking for tuxedos. Right this way, sir. Right. So there's a conversational aspect and a consultative aspect to it that I was trying to mimic digitally. So phone didn't work. And I'm like, where does my customer live? Where do they talk with their friends and family? I'll keep going back to this. This is important for you. Where does your customer live? So who are they? And then where do they connect and communicate with their friends and family? That's where your brand has to be. And for me at the time, it was text, right? They were texting their, their groomsmen in group text. They were talking to their fiancés in, in text, right? During the work day. So I had to go there and be there. And I, and I quick Google search. All I could find was these spammy five digit, here's 10% off your order, which is still very much what's, what's out there today and what you guys likely see in your Facebook ad feeds. And I didn't want that, right? I, tr I always try to empathize with my customer. I was my customer and I even was at Voxy. Like I built the product for myself. What do I want? And I don't want spammy, unsolicited, one-way text. You don't know what I want to buy, when I want to buy it. And you're just sending me promotional codes. That might work with a subset of the audience, but if that happens to me, I unsubscribe instantly. I was trying to build and win your trust. And from that trust, build a relationship. And from that relationship, land the deal, right? So I couldn't find a way to do it you know, with anything off the shelf. So I just got my cell phone and I was like, hey, let's find out where this breaks. So I started doing unscalable things like texting my customers personally, saying things like, hey, what's up? I'm Bogdan, I'm your personal stylist over here at Manguin. Thanks so much for seeing my website yesterday. I saw you were looking at my blue suits. Quick question, is that what you want the groomsmen to wear? Question mark, right? I was trying to get an input, an inbound, so I could qualify you. That's the first step. And I got a ton of them. I got over 70% in the first two hours, which was great. And they were asking questions that my emails were supposed to be answering. They never opened all these things. And I was answering them, giving them links. Oh, go do this. I got you, bro, et cetera, right? Fast forward uh, uh, four, four weeks after that, I ended up getting about a 70% response rate within the first two hours to my messages, right? Coming from my phone, a couple of them even called me. They wanted to ask questions and went and bought. I was like, giddy. I was like, this is great. 
Fast forward four weeks in, I've closed about 49.2% of the business, which is a lot of money for me. It was roughly about $200,000. I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Why did this work? Is it because I'm the founder? Is it because I really care? Is it because I'm better at sales? Let's see where this breaks, right? Where does marginal revenue equal marginal cost? How, how far can I scale this channel before it's maxed out? And very quickly, um, I went to uh, Walmart and I bought a bunch of straight talk wireless prepaid cell phones. Remember, do things that don't scale, but also don't cost money on an annual basis. So I bought a bunch of month to month prepaid phones, these really crappy LGs, uh, which coincidentally no longer make cell phones because they're so crappy. No offense if somebody has an LG, but these were awful. Like a third of them didn't work. The touch screen wouldn't work half the time, but either here nor there, we started texting with our customers. And very quickly, the results that Bogdan had had, you know, Ashley and Hillary and Evan were having folks in our customer service team. And I was like, this is working. It's not because it was me, it's just people. And they're responding and they're doing the same thing. So I hold myself up in this room with them for about two months and I play with copy. What do I do when you don't respond, right? How do I follow up? How do I do these things, right? What if I, what if you click the Bitly link I gave you, but you don't buy? Do I give you an offer? When? Right? And we play with all this stuff and massive Google Sheets at the time. And at the end of that two months, I'd actually grown by a pretty dramatic percentage uh, and I run out of inventory. So I was scrambling to find more inventory and I couldn't get any from overseas because it would take too long to dye, mill, cut the fabric and get them over. And I had about 15,000 weddings that I was going to negatively impact, which in my industry was awful. Like one wedding would, would ruin you online. I forgot to mention, we were the highest rated and reviewed tux funnel company in the United States at that point, which is another strategy we can talk about, right? How to scale reviews and then use that as a marketing lever. But the challenge I ran into was they were going to kill my reputation. So I needed suits fast and tuxes fast. And the only person that had it was my big competitor, right? So I was Netflix, men's warehouse was Blockbuster, and I'd rent it out of all my DVDs. So I had to go see if I could borrow theirs. And obviously these guys are, you know, laughing and then, you know, they think so highly of themselves because here's little old Bogdan, you know, with not enough inventory. But once they saw the growth in what I'd done, George Zimmer, the guy from those TV ads with the beard was like, holy cow, this is big. We got to buy you. And whatever you figured out, you got to bring to our brands. So when faced with that or imminent destruction, we ended up selling the business. Everybody did well. Our shareholders did really well. Uh, faster exit than I think we were all expecting. But it was the right thing for the business at the time. So we consolidated. And then I very quickly became the CMO of this much larger brand. And the goal was bogged in whatever you're figuring out here, here's effectively unlimited resources. To me, at least it was unlimited. There was so many zeros. Um, go figure out how to scale your texting thing. Here's two call centers in the Midwest. Here's one in Florida, go do it. And I went and spent about a year and a half trying to scale conversations, but now I was struggling to scale call centers. I was struggling to scale playbooks the reps wouldn't show up and I had a whole playbook. I'd ask you a series of questions and I was supposed to update them in my CRM so I could better email market to you. So I could show you better Facebook ads. I had a whole practice, right? In my MarTech stack and the reps weren't doing these things. They weren't following up like my reps had done when it was 17 of them in a little room and I could be there, right? And now I had hundreds and actually at one point I had over a thousand and they just didn't run the same playbooks and they just didn't scale. So I was getting really, really frustrated because when this worked, it worked really well, but it was super inconsistent. So again, this is now 2018. I went looking for a better way to do this. And I was like, oh, it's you know, been, been about a year. Somebody surely figured this out. Nobody. And at that point, I'm like, all right, there's a big opportunity, bigger than what I even had with Menguin, right? Which was a pretty large opportunity in the multi-billion dollar space of helping brands connect with their customer, learn their preferences using AI, and then sell to them. So I became so bullish that I left my job to go build that business. And that's what Voxy does today. We help consumer brands, merchants, whatever you want to call them, right? Uh, that sell, whether it's online, in message, in store, if you've got an omni-channel experience through pop-ups, et cetera, right? Acquire new customers and drive that revenue. Uh, we generally offer from email marketing as a revenue driver for, for an e-com business by about 10 times. Uh, we become a top three revenue stream in about two and a half weeks. I don't want to talk specifically about Voxy. I think that that's dumb. If you guys have questions, let me know. I want to talk more about this medium and how to do it right. So we just talked about SMS. Why it's so hot today, and I'm going to share my screen. Um, why SMS is so hot today is really this. Let me go. I have a bunch of research, all this stuff, but it's really these stats. That's 98% open rate. Everybody is preying on it. It's going to continue dropping over time as it gets more saturated. So rule number one, capture and go after new nascent 
marketing channels quickly because eventually marginal revenue equals marginal cost. I think we've got a number of years on this channel, but you need to go quickly if you want to attack it. That's why everybody's jumping in. It's that open rate. And if you do a good enough job on the copy, this is what we do on the left-hand side versus the traditional stuff on the right-hand side. You can get that really high response rate. Our average brand gets an over 50% response rate. Our average click-through rate is over 30%, all with less than 1.2% on subscribe rate. How do I do all these things? By acting like a human, remembering that my end customer is a human, right? And treating them as so, right? The traditional brand is, here's 10% off your next purchase, unsolicited, right? Text, text to stop, et cetera. Here, I'm gonna maximize this. Let me see if you can see it better now, guys. Um, that's not the right way to do it. The right way to do it is through conversation. And that's really the secret sauce that we developed, which was every outbound needs to have an inbound. And if the customer doesn't respond or doesn't engage, that is an inbound. It means the message sucked, right? Or it didn't do what it was supposed to do. So let's ideate and A-B test a different variant. So going back to that, that's effectively the entire product. It's that exact thing. A conversation is two-sided and, and you have to account for both sides. Um, so that's number one, what is SMS, right? How, do, how, do you, how does it work? It's pretty simple. You're just preying on, on the high open rate. Like I, I can't see the raised hands unless I stop sharing. How many of you have unread text messages? Likely very few of you, right? Your founders, you likely will have some because you know things are constantly attacking you, but think about your end customer. Think about yourself before you were a founder, your family members, right? You hate the red dot on iMessage or, or that blue dot on, on an Android. You, you wanna make it go away. You're okay with email amassing a ton of, uh, of unread emails, but in text, you want, you want that unread to go away. What that means though is every message is effectively read. So if you do the right, engagement or you have the right hook or the right carrot for your customer, they're going to click, they're going to buy, they're going to engage. Some of our best engagements, we work with pub socks here in town, um, they send a gif of a, of a puppy eating a slice of pizza. So happy equals day of the week, happy Wednesday. You know, this is, this is your crew over at pub socks. Thanks for joining the fam. And then two days later, they'll send a promo, right? And it just kills. But the first message, naturally, you would think I'll send a promo off the bat. No. The first message, I don't have an example here, but I'm happy to throw you those flows, are the, are the puppy with the pizza emoji. Why? Trust. Remember, you have to build the relationship, give before you get, right? So thinking with that mentality is really, really important. And we partner with our, all of our brands. We actually have a full customer success team. It's all former digital marketing folks that are actively training and teaching you how to deploy this medium because you can do it like what we do on the left or you can do it the way, you, the way you've seen it on the right. This outperforms the stuff on the right by about 4.2x off the bat, right? So it's all about having an authentic engagement. So now I want to go back. So we talked a little about SMS. Before I go into, you know, how brands are using it effectively and how I recommend to use it in the consumer space, um, can, does anybody have any questions? Um, I have a question yes. to start off. Um, so um, you're not saying like the pr promo stuff is necessarily bad. It's just like you need to be strategic about when you introduce it. Correct. Okay. Our, our, our data shows if you send a promo every week, you're going to have an over 10% unsubscribe rate, which is what a lot of the short code guys that you guys have seen, even the Clavios of the world, right? They have an SMS park now. You'll see a really high unsubscribe rate. It needs to be about 60-40. 60% of the time, it should be content, cool things you're doing, new products you're launching, happy insert holiday, happy nurses appreciation week, happy teachers appreciation week. Here's what we're doing, right? Because people are signing up because they like your brand. And the other 40% of the time should be promo driven. Often what we'll do is we'll ask questions. When's your birthday? How many kids do you have? Whatever's relevant for the brain. Our AI understands that, appends to your profile, the specific information we're mining, but also pushes it to Klaviyo and Shopify so you can segment there. Why that's important is now you know more about your user so you can better segment and send them more personalized content, right? Yeah. If you sent me the right offer every single day because you magically knew what I wanted to buy every single day, I'd click on every single link. We're not quite there yet and we're probably never going to be quite there. It's an aspirational goal. But going back to that, Leslie, it's all about making sure that you're giving before you ask or get, right? Mm -hmm. so that's a really key part. Very important content. Great things to send. Is this something that can be implemented in our website under chat and it comes in a text message? Yes, John, great question. It is. Um, we have a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, one, it's a pop-up where you get all the customer's information. 
And then from there, you can, you're texting with them uh, uh, on their actual phone. And we have a message hub where you can have a back and forth. The reason that's important is if you think about the average website duration, it's about two and a half minutes in the United States, right? For, for a standard website, maybe your e-commerce website is a, is a little better. Say it's three minutes. That's three minutes out of my entire day that I'm available to engage if I'm on your website versus if I'm on your phone with that 98% open rate and I send you the right message, I'm building a conversation that can span weeks, months, or even years. So with some of our old, we're almost three years old. Some of our oldest customers, actually almost all of them are still with us. And they have customers that they've had since the beginning that they're still engaging, that they're still driving LTV from. Um, so it's all about taking a long-term approach to it, right? So you can't just, what I call nuke it, right? Or, or, um, or spray and pray, where you just burn them with offers to get a subset to click. That's a really quick way to burn that list. But to that point, John, it's exactly it, right? You can acquire them on the website. We've got pop-ups, we've got live chat looking like modals, but also we have a variety of different ways we can bring somebody in and from there, you can now engage them. John, did that answer your question? Yes, I appreciate it. Um, I, I was actually looking into a um, company uh, to take over my chat on the website. Yeah. And so um, this is very interesting because yeah, I, I, it, the other company, all they needed was like to embed some codes yeah. in the back end of the website. And so I have a company called GoSite that I hire to run my, my website. That's awesome. And the, the company I saw, I forgot the name of it, but it, it had the AI where if they if they knew that you're about to exit the browser, pop uh, up. yep, a pop up will come up and start a chat, and that chat will turn into a text message, and you start engaging that way. We, we do the exact same thing, John. Okay. Um, I would argue that you don't wait for them to break that that pain, right? I don't know what your bounce rate is on the website, but it's 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 likely you know double digits, right? I don't know if it's twenty, I don't know if it's forty percent. What I would do is actually have a pop up at the beginning. Where, and you've got a compelling offer. Sometimes it's a discount, but sometimes it might just be entered into a drawing. We've had a lot of success with that type of contest-like mentality. Yeah. You know, sign up, give us your email and your phone number, and we'll enter you into our weekly or monthly drawing for X. We've had a lot of success with that. You're not giving anything away, and now you can begin having that conversation. A brand that comes to mind we work with is called Junk Brands. They do a little over uh, $80 million a year in revenue, e-commerce, they basically sell uh, headbands, like, like moisture wicking headbands. It's kind of crazy how, how big they've gotten. Junk brands. If you go to their website, there'll be a pop-up that asks for your email. And on step two, they'll give you an extra 5% off to get your phone number. So if you want to do it, type it in. And then from there, they'll text you and they'll ask you your name. They'll ask you what your favorite sport is, your birthday. And then they'll give you that promo. And now they'll start automating follow-ups, right? You told us you love to run. You, you, you told us you love to lift weights for your main workout, right? I, I, you told us you love Marvel, right? They've got a Marvel partnership. Well, you know, um, uh, Black Panther just dropped. Check out our new Black Panther headband, right? So they've got incredible LTV because they're asking these questions and they're basically constantly drip nurturing you based off of what you told them. I call this a supply driven model. I know more things about my customer so I can build things for them because I know them so well that I know they're going to buy. I know that they're comic book lovers. I know that they love to run. I know that they have their their parents of little kids, whatever is important, right? That's the most important part of this thing. But to that, to your original point, that pop-up captures it. And then from there, you now have a relationship. And so long as you don't abuse it or send too many promos, they won't unsubscribe, right? Where people get upset is a lot of these SMS companies will recommend because they charge you per text that you send as many messages as you possibly can to your whole list. I would, I would counter and say you the exact opposite approach. You send us few messages that give your customer a delightful experience, right? While well, being a brain to touch point that moves the needle long term, right? Because I know we all want to make money, right? We all we want to we want to hit monthly numbers, we want to grow. But taking that longer term view of sure, I could text everybody and I'll spend X, but I'll probably get a Y click through rate, whatever that may be. That's often not going to be the best way to really maximize LTV long term, right? So that's kind of the, the, the advice that I would give an e-commerce brand is really be strategic about what you send and when, because you're gonna have hundred percent open rate. So make sure you're proud of what you're sending. It's on brand and it's delightful for the customer. 
Great question. Um, Angela also had a question. She, well, she raised her hand. Angela. Yeah, it's hi. So I, um, I think I heard a little bit of this in your last um, response, but I wanted to uh, just get a clean cut answer on. So you're talking about segmentation in SMS. How do you, how are you um, segmenting them? So if you're asking for things like birthday, month, or anniversary, and things like that, are you? Is that a question that's automated through the um, the sign up for the yeah. SMS, or is that like a, okay? It's and then are you? It's, it's all our product, Angela. So we'll work with you when we onboard you to figure out what you want to build. Like what is important for you to know about your customer. And we have conversational playbooks, similar to if you're using Clavio and you have those templates that are pre-canned that are already in your in your account. We'll basically um, pre-populate the right ones in there based on what you're looking to do. And then we'll work with you to make sure they're on brand. And then our AI picks those up. We built your own NLU natural language understanding system. So I can, you know, if you want to learn birth date we have people for their birthdays, they can respond March 2nd, or they can respond 3-2. It'll pick it up, standardize the format, append to their profile, instantly add them into an audience or a list, and then also push that data back to Klaviyo if you, if you want it to go there. So now you can also send an email list for an email drip to March birthdays. Oh, okay. Okay. But that's how, our, like that. that's how our system would do it. It's all based on this NLU. We'll work with you to build the AI or conversational flows based on whatever you want. And obviously with our recommendations, you say, I wanna learn more about my customer. I wanna drive more repeat sales. We'll work with you and have those playbooks because all of our folks, are, this is kind of what they do day in and day out. So we'll have all those recommendations based on your business, its industry and kind of sub, sub industry, whether it's retail fashion, you know, uh, whatever it may be, women's, children's clothing, whatever it may be. Gotcha, okay, thank you. No, my pleasure, great question. Um, so next up, right, we just talked about SMS kind of at the top. What I want to focus on now is some of the places that you can deploy this across the stack or across your customer journey to drive more efficacy. And there's really three places when I think about kind of viral loops, which I know are very trendy of what I want to do. There's three places where I think you can deploy SMS today or conversational texting to great efficacy. Number one is top of the funnel. Everybody here is likely doing some type of lead gen maybe light pay, maybe a little more paid if you've got a little more budget, whatever you're doing, somebody's filling out a form or giving you information for something in return. As soon as that happens, whether it's a Facebook lead ad, et cetera, you should be engaging them, not within five minutes, not within five hours, instantly. So the data that we have shows, if you can get, a, if you can get to a lead within the first five minutes, their chances of conversion go up by about 3.5X. So automating, as soon as somebody gives you some information, you're talking to them, very important. And what we've seen is if you're going to give them an offer, et cetera, right? Making sure that you follow up until they redeem that offer, really important. That's step one. Step two is abandoned cart, right? If we could clear every abandoned cart in the world, I think we'd have something like $10 trillion of e-commerce revenue. Um, but we can't, right? This is where things break because somebody might be interested in something, they add it to their cart and they disappear and we never see them again. And often the standard playbook that you see Clavio and MailChimp and all these guys recommend is send a discount you know, wait four hours and 24 hours and send a discount. If you look at the data, only about 40% of the time is the customer looking for a discount. The rest of the time, it's often confusion. Is this the right product for me? Is this the only variant you have? Will it fit me? Will it fit my child? Whatever the question is, right? So our recommendation is have that abandoned cart flow, which we do with Shopify natively, where I can say, hey, uh, hey, Leslie, I noticed you were, you were on my website and you, you left the tux in there. Quick question. Is that the one you were looking for? Right. And based on how Leslie responds, determines what happens next. If she says, yeah, but it's really expensive. Oh, well, since you're a first time customer, I'd love to give you a, a quick discount. We really want to show you why we're the best in X. Oh, yeah. I, I had a question about sizing. Great. Let me connect you to a service representative right instantly. And we'll answer those questions. So triaging that and not just instantly giving away margin. What I think it cheapens brand, but two. I don't think a customer really needs it, right? That's, that's usually a lever that you have to pull at the end of the sales cycle if nothing else has worked um, because they don't realize the value of your product. And the third place where we've had a ton of success with this, so we talked about top of funnel, right? When you acquire a new lead, building that relationship, an abandoned cart, making sure that you can get them down funnel. And then post-purchase, review, 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 it's huge. Where we talk about segmentation, the best segmentation you can have is who's a happy customer and why, 
and who's an unhappy customer and why and actioning those accordingly. You treat all your happy customers completely differently. These are your advocates. These are people that you do surprise and delight. These are people that you go to their wedding registry if you know they're getting married and you buy them something from your company, $20, $30, because you, you want them to love, to love you even more, right? Because they will go tell your friends, their friends about your product or your service. Your unhappy customers are one, product feedback, it's how, you, how you can improve, but two, opportunities to flip them. Maybe they bought the wrong product. Maybe they didn't understand the value prop, whatever that may be. It's a great way to try, to try at least to flip them. But those happy customers, you can now drive them to reviews. You can do referral playbooks. You can drive them to share the love on Facebook. You can treat them completely differently. You can give them VIP experiences. So segmenting post-purchase is the most important thing in my view, because if you think about what an e-commerce business should do, really everything is a retention play, right? We're always optimizing for our LTV to CAC ratio. You want it as high as possible. So how do I do that? Once I acquire this very expensive customer from Google, Facebook, you know, which are getting more and more expensive every day, right? CPMs are rising. How do I monetize them to really maximize my profitability as a business? So really the first purchase in my view is just the beginning of the relationship. How do I expand upon it now? So those are the pl three places that I would deploy SMS. And by the way, this deck I have, Leslie, I'll just kick it over to you if you wanna share it and if you wanna give it to everybody because uh, uh, I know I'm not doing a very good job of, of sharing from, we have case studies, all this stuff, but right. that's really, really important, right? So we talk about the three places where in the MarTech stack, where do you want to focus? The most important in my view is after somebody buys, figuring out why they bought, why they cared about your product, and then finding a way to basically pour fuel in that fire to get them to come back. And even more so to tell friends and family, because that's free, right? That's how you spread your CAC out. Otherwise, you're going, to be, you're going to be going back to the same crowded fishing wells, fighting with the same players. And every day, everybody's spending more because they've all got to grow, right? And the only person who wins is Facebook and Google and Pinterest or, and TikTok or wherever, wherever you're advertising, right? The brands don't win when they don't own the channel. So in my view, acquire them there and then build that relationship with them where you can have the one-to-one. -one. Today, it's text. Tomorrow, it might be some, something else, right? It might be TikTok DM. It might be, you know, uh, be, you know, video chat. I don't know. I'm, I'm making that up, but you've got to be where your customer talks to their friends and family, and you've got to have an authentic presence there. That's my view on this. Makes sense. So we talked about why SMS. We talked about where I would deploy it. Um, next up, I want to talk about uh, uh, really MarTech stack in general and how to use SMS, email, live chat, direct mail, and kind of use them as a complement of, of the one thing, which is I think every direct-to-consumer brand either succeeds or fails based off of three criteria. So when I was at Menguin, my one of my advisors and close friends was the head of marketing for Dollar Shave. They scaled the business, exited to Unilever. He became a great confidant and he's still a good friend of mine today. And he helped me learn a lot of the kind of the blocking and tackling. It's my first company. I'd never done anything in marketing, let alone direct-to-consumer, right? So I learned a lot from him. Um, but the most, the most important thing that I learned where I think most e-com or direct digitally native brands fail on is educating the customer on who you are, what you do, and why the customer should care, right? In that order, right? You've got to have that really concisely down and it should be in everything, in your email collateral, in the images that you show, in the video, in the, video, in the copy that, that's narrated at the bottom of the video, who you are what you do, why I as the consumer should care, right? And when you think about great brands, they've, they've dialed that in and they can espouse it very quickly in a sentence or two. And now once they have that, they dispel that or distribute that across a variety of mediums. So fundamentally what all that tells me and it should tell you is how you succeed is by talking with your customer and making sure they understand those three value props, right? making sure that they know who you are, what you do, why they, why they care, what you stand for, right? Why it's important to them. And then making sure they can regurgitate and articulate that to their friends and family. So how you do that is one by talking with that customer. So before I had Voxy, after I sold, I was privileged to have a staff of people that could help me. But every week, literally every week up until I left the company uh, uh, to start Voxy, I talked to 10 customers that were in our sales cycle, we would bribe them with Amazon gift cards because nobody would just talk to me for 10 minutes for free, full disclosure. People that were had abandoned carts, people that had been getting my emails but not engaging. And I would just spend 10 minutes asking them questions, right? Literally on the phone. Uh, and then I would do that for 10 recently purchased customers. 
and 10 customers who hadn't bought from me, whose, whose events had passed, to try to understand why they didn't buy. Why did they go to a competitor? What could I have given them, right, that would have made them change their mind, right? And it was just a great learning opportunity for me. And often you're, you're, you're busy, you're a founder, you don't have time for this, you have to make time. This is the most important part of your business is talking with your customers. I would find ways to automate it. You guys are all very smart at automating things, right? You're working with, with Saltbox, right? So you're thinking through MarTech, Fulfillment Stack, all these different things. Automate those follow-ups. Even if you can't have 10 of those conversations, have three, it's better than zero. Talk with your customers. Don't make in inferences. And, and I, I would say the most dangerous thing to do is send surveys because then you've got survey bias. Only specific people who want to take your survey, whether it's because you're incentivizing them or they had a bad experience or they had a really good experience, you want to find everybody and you want to get that feedback. And the best way I was able to do it is by random polling. What questions do you guys have, if any? Any questions? I think we're good. Awesome. Um, that's really all I had. Uh, just to just to encapsulate, SMS is powerful. I would find if you're going to want to hop in the channel, there's really two things I would consider. Number one is is it one way or two way, right? Make sure that if you're thinking about this with the long term view, you you look at one that's conversational that can handle inbound that has some type of automation. Um, and two, even more importantly, SMS is expensive. I want to underscore that. It's not as cheap as email. Why? If you guys remember the, the legacy flip phones, when you'd have that T9 texting and it would say one of two, one, two, and over a certain amount of characters, those are called segments. The carriers charge us as operators by the segment. Everybody passes that cost through to their customers. So that's why it's expensive. The problem is the carriers haven't upgraded these pipes since SMS was invented and they're getting more and more costly to maintain. But the flip side of that is I just told you this is a medium that outperforms email by 10x. Our average e-comp customer has a, has a 15 to 16x ROI, it fluctuates monthly that we can prove, right? That's pretty incredible. We have a number of e-comp clients that are doing over 30x. Depends on the price point, depends on the product, depends on the customer set, re repeatability, right? Is it once a year? Is it something that you can upsell across some multiple products? But so know that if you're hopping in, depending on the size of your list, it will likely cost you anywhere between three to five times as much as email marketing. But again, if it outperforms by 10x, you can do your ROI math, making sure your gross margins are, are, are there and everything else from, from your unit economic standpoint. And you can make sure it makes sense for your business. It will not make sense for all businesses. Businesses that sell a single SKU with low repeatability, this, this is not a good medium for you. Businesses that have high LTV, high repeat purchase rates, whether they're consumable, whether there's some type of disposable item or good, this does make a lot of sense for you. Anything where you've got the ability to engage about a new product over and over again, and you have rich content, whether it's influencer content, video content, uh, uh, blog content, it works. Um, I was just curious, like it, if someone's not quite ready to like dive all the way in, like either because it's scary, it's expensive, you know, like, it sounds great when you say, you know, that there's these good margins if you're paying, you know, X amount, but yeah. it comes back like tenfold, but it's still scary. You know, is there anything that you could recommend that people do kind of when they're in between or, or like that could help you assess, like if you're ready to take that leap or, you know, I don't know, just help yeah. people to like, think about how they should be thinking about it. And if they, if it is something aside from the SKUs, like if it could be something that would work for their business. Yeah. So what we do for e-commerce, we'll do a free trial. Um, I would recommend that you look at, I think almost everyone that's servicing e-commerce has to do that. That's how we buy, right? We always look at free trials. We look at ways to get our hands on the, on the product before we commit. So mm -hmm. do a free trial, but don't do it to your full audience. The reason, remember, if you, if you get a text from a number and your customer thinks it's you and you only use it for two weeks and you're like, man, this sucks, that's a bad experience, right? So pick a subset of your audience, text them, see how it goes, and then see if you see higher rates of lift. But the, the caveat there is don't trust the internal analytics of any of these products. I hope you guys are, know that, right? If you looked at your attribution by, by, by marketing tool and then you added them all up, you'd probably be making five times what you actually make every month because they all take more credit than they should. 
right? So I have a very biased, jaded view. Even look at it conservatively. Look at just UTM parameters. Last click, right? Which is extremely biased. I understand that. But you want to be as discerning as possible. In a worst case scenario, if I put a buck in, did I get at least three out, right? Which remember is, is the minimum you have to have that three to one to make any model work. I don't know your, your margins for some of you might be four, might be five, right? But look at it from a worst case scenario. And if that holds, then I would start experimenting and diving in deeper with the channel. But I would start with a subset, maybe 10, 15% of your audience, and then really invest there and try it for two weeks, whatever the free trial is. Usually a lot of them will give you a month, we'll give you a month. Um, and then from there, once you have that viability and you know, hey, this is gonna work for me, then you can dive in and really start building it out. But crawl, walk, run, and don't go past any of those stages. Make sure you go in that order, right? Because you'll get a lot of data around what's working. And the last one, right, uh, Buzz, you had a good point. How do, you, how do you try this? Do some research. There's a lot of comparison sites. There's a lot of review sites. But really, I whether you use Vox or not is irrelevant to me. If we can answer any questions. We have Vardhan and Michelle here as well. They're from our team. Um, we'd love to be a resource, especially if you guys are in Atlanta or, or Dallas, right? We, we, we love entrepreneurship. We love folks that are building and creating from scratch. You know, whether our product works or not for you is irrelevant. If you want to talk with your customers, we'll give you the right advice uh, uh, that is irrespective of us working together or not. And I think that's the way, we should, that's the way it should be. But to that end, ask questions, look around. There's all kinds of forums. Uh, there's a pretty big one on Reddit, I think, for, for marketing. Um, I'm not the biggest Reddit fan, but it's a big, but it's a big audience. And there's a couple of those large groups. Um, Clubhouse is a couple of these e-com groups. I wouldn't necessarily go there as often. Those are usually hype machines for some product. So that the other, there is even some legacy Facebook groups that are actually still good um, where you can get uh, advice. Keep in mind, a lot of times you'll get like 50 comments that tell you discerning things. So just aggregate. Um, but the most important one is I'd say there's a couple of really good uh, 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 communities out there uh, uh, where, where you can also ask questions. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Does anybody have any other questions? All righty. Oh, we've got one more. Angela. On one second. Angela, give me a second. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So I just wanted to um, to just chime in with the, um, the the results of the SMS marketing. I uh, I recently started. I guess it was October. That wasn't recent. Well, it was October. I started working with an SMS company, and um, all the things that you said are exactly the truth. Like I invested way more money into that marketing platform than I had in any of my, you know, my Clavio or any other um, email platform. But the the first month, you know, I was kind of skeptical with it because I hadn't really thought about, you know, I was I had my SMS set up through um, through Shopify and didn't really think about it. Just kind of set it up and let it go. And then when this company came and they proposed to me what they could do. I was still kind of skeptical because the cost was so much higher. And he said, well, let us do it for you for a month for free just to show you. And when I'm telling you the return on an SMS platform, it was, I mean, he could have given me any number at that point and asked me to pay it for per month. And I would have said, okay, because the amount of one, the engagement with my customer had gone up tremendously, being able to talk back and forth with them. And then also being able to um, set up, you know, set up a, uh, a regular communication point. I like the fact that you talked about 60, 40 um, with nurturing and then promotional, because that does matter. You don't always want to go to them with a, you know, hit their SMS with a sale. You know, it's not always about the sale. Sometimes it's just about the communication, which I think goes further than just offering a discount or, or you know, or some kind of promotion. And um, so that really helps. But I've seen every month, it's, a, it's an expensive investment every month. But the amount of um, return that I get on that is better than any return that I have. Uh, from are, are you still texting today, Angela? I am. Cool. Who are you using? Um, Vaya. Yeah, I'm familiar with Vaya. They're out of LA. Um, do they have any humans responding to your messages or is it a lot of the one way and then you're responding to any inbounds? Um, I'm having a human response. So even when I send a text that simply says your package is out for delivery, I get a lot of responses where people are like, yay. So <laughs> I usually respond with, yeah, you know, so please let us know what you think, you know, just to let them know that there's a human there. So that there's a human touch as opposed to them thinking that they're just getting bot, you know, bot responses. So um, I really like that. And then people will say, you know, if I'll send a, 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 a you know, I'll send a, 
a, a promotion or something and someone will say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting until you get this color in. So it's a way for them to kind of let me know what they're looking for as well. So I'm really enjoying it. But yeah, you're right. It is going to be more expensive, but if you can maintain it and you're seeing the positive unit economics, it's a great medium. The key is what I, what I would recommend kind of like last, my last point is make sure that you don't do more than roughly three offers or promotions a month, anything right. past that. And we just started seeing that the unsubscribe rate just starts basically skyrocketing. Okay. Uh, that's good. That's good advice. And when you said three, um, so promotions, is that the six, is that still the 60, 40? So yeah, it, 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 it roughly ends up being 60, 40, because again, okay. if you're talking, I wouldn't let it be more than two weeks in between interaction. Um, if you can, and it, you can afford to do it once every week to nine days is ideal, not a promotion, but just a touch point, but you don't want to overwhelm with offers and you don't want to get too annoying, right? Again, if they're engaging you and they're texting in, I would treat those a little differently. I'm just talking, you're going to have a large amount of what, what uh, our vice president of product called lurkers, people that see the every text, but they don't engage. They might click on your links and things like that. And you don't want to affect, essentially aggravate those folks. Gotcha. Perfect sense. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And congrats. I'm glad you're texting. Uh, keep it up. Um, one thing I would recommend, I don't know if I can do this, is if you're still using Klaviyo, uh, we've had a really good flow where you send an email. It's cheaper, right? And if somebody doesn't open it within X hours, then you trigger the text. Um, that way, you know that they get the message, right? So you should be able to connect both audiences together. So you've got 10,000 subscribers. I'm just making this up in email and SMS. Um, and maybe you get a 20% open rate on that email, right? Anybody who didn't open the email, I would send the text to, because that way you've got a, you're only sending 8,000 instead of 10,000, right? Um, yeah. And you're basically optimizing on costs a little bit. Uh, okay. uh, ask that's them if they should yeah. be able to do that. But that that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good way to make those, both those channels work a little harder for you. Yeah, definitely. I just, I, I did do the integration. I just did the integration with Flavio. So um, I'll definitely um, use that. Thank you so much. And my pleasure. Um, Angela, I was going to say like, um, as a consumer of your products, because you know, I love all your stuff. Um, this is just like my two cents because I do get your texts. Um, I got one on Mother's Day. Um, I, I would love, I, I'm curious if like there's a way to make it more obvious that it's a two way. Like I, I I've had no, I've gotten like probably three or four texts and I never knew I could write you back. Um, oh, okay. yeah. And so, cause if there's never really like a question or, you know what I mean? Um, uh, and so I, I actually kind of just thought that these were like little notifications coming through, you know what I mean? Okay. You might, yeah, you might get more from people. Idea. Yeah. You might be able to get more from people. If you ask, I don't know if you can weigh in on that Bogdan, but, um, anyway, that was, yeah. That's exactly it, right? If you can, uh, and, and I don't know all the capabilities, it, highly recommend that, right? Just little touch points uh, uh, will go a long way there. Okay, thank you. That's a great suggestion. Thanks, Leslie. All righty. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much. Um, my email will be in the stack. It's just Bogdan at Voxy, B-O-G-D-A-N at Voxy.com. If I can help with anything, would love to. Keep up the great work. Excited to see you guys building both here in Atlanta and in Dallas, wherever you guys are, uh, and keep up the great work. You know, uh, uh, again, very near and dear uh, to my heart is, is what you guys are doing. So uh, if, we, if we can be helpful, let us know. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Appreciate Cheers. it. All right, have a great afternoon, guys. Thanks, guys.